Then it's code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the well, Welcome back to my state of video series. Um, in this video, we're, uh, we're We've begun a series on looking at different kinds of visualizations or graphics in Stata. And what I'm going to do is create a number of videos to show you particular techniques. And then we'll have a video that will look at all the different options that can be used across all of the different visualizations. So the last video I produced um, worked on histograms. And those are really nice visualizations when you're uh, playing with your data and trying to get a handle on a new data set. There's an alternative to a histogram called a kernel density plot. And if you want to learn more about the kernel density plot, uh, go to Wikipedia and search for that term. And um, I have a link up here that you can follow as well. Uh, the kernel density plot is a smoothing function. And so it will give us the same general information as a histogram, but often does it in a way that's a bit more informative and doesn't have us have to make as many decisions about the number of bins um, and the bin width. That's not to say that there aren't different options that we can take that will affect what the uh, graphics look like. So let's go ahead. I've got the general social survey uh, running here. I'm going to execute my first two lines of code to keep only uh, cases from year 2010 and also to keep three variables, the prestige, 80, sex, and marital. Uh, the way I like to execute these commands when I'm doing just a, sh a few lines of code is to come over here and click on this execute button. And you can see that both in the results window, I see there were no errors and the commands are echoed back. And I can see in my variables window that I have the three variables that I'm interested in. Now, the kernel density plot can be done in two ways. Uh, mostly, I'm going to show you the two-way density plot. Again, Stata has kind of got their graphics split into two different areas. Some graphics can be done on their own, like histogram and k-density. And others have to be done in the context of graph two-way. I've shortened the command here to two-way instead of the graph two-way, and it could be shortened even further to just TW. So let's go ahead and look at a default plot. I have my two-way, uh, so the, the structure of the command is to say two-way, so I know that I'm doing two-way plots. The name of the kind of plot I'm doing, which in this case is k-density, followed by a single variable name. You'll notice I have a comma there, and so now I'm going to use a name option that we discussed in the histogram video to call this first graphic k1, and a sub option to replace in case it already exists to allow Stata to write over it. So let's go ahead and get our first kernel density plot looking at that Prestige 80. So there's our default for kernel density. Now we could compare this to a histogram and I'll just go ahead and create a default histogram here. I'll try to get these both on the screen at the same time. And you can see that we get the same general impression of this variable, but it's, it's smoothed out and averaged across all those bins to get a little bit more, uh, give a little more structure to the data set. So there's our first kernel density plot. And I'm just going to put that over here. And now we're going to go to uh, look at the next one. So there's two main options you can select to change the look of the kernel density uh, plot. The first is you can change the bandwidth of the plot. And again, I encourage you to look at the Wikipedia article. But in essence, since this is a smoothing function, which is averaging, we can change the width of the averages. So we can average over bigger distances of our variable or smaller distances. Now, the, the option to do this is called B width followed by a number. And in these two examples, I'm creating two kernel density plots that are identical, except that the bandwidth is equal to 1 in the first one and bandwidth is equal to 5 in the second one. And I'm going to name these graphics K2 and K3. And we'll put these graphs right alongside each other so you can begin to see the difference. So our first graphic is using the defaults. Our second graphic has changed the bandwidth to 1, so we can see that we're getting less smoothing. And the third graphic is changing our bandwidth to uh, 4, so we're getting um, a lot of smoothing, probably too much. 
and somewhere in between will be the smoothing you want. You don't have to use integer numbers, and there's a formula on the Wikipedia page which would give you a pretty good first guess about the bandwidth to use, or you can simply experiment until you find a number that works pretty well for you. The next command is I'm going to move away from two-way and just show you the k-density plot. So these are two different plots. You can do help two-way k-density or just help k-density and you'll get two different help files. They're similar. They produce the same kinds of output, but there are some subtle differences between them. Sometimes if you're looking at a variable, you'd like to know if it's approximately normally distributed. And so you can use the k-density command with the normal option to produce, uh, a, to superimpose a normal distribution over the graphic. So in this example, I'm using k-density, the name of my variable, my occupational prestige variable. I'm going to select a bandwidth of 4, and now I'm using the normal option to superimpose the normal distribution, and of course I'm going to give this uh, graphic a name. I'll call this one K4. And there we go. So we can see that this particular distribution is a bit skewed to the right, and it's a bit light um, at the lower end and kind of in the middle compared to a normal distribution. Now, I'm not going through all the different options, but as you can imagine, everything you're seeing in this graphic can be edited or can be changed using um, options within the kernel density command. I can change the width and color of the lines and the pattern of the lines. I could use dots or dashes instead. I can put tick marks in, in between the 20 and the 40 and the 60, and minor tick marks. I can rename the, you know, give different, better titles to the legend. And sort of everything is very configurable here, but mostly I'm just taking the defaults so you can see um, uh, just to highlight the few things that I'm, I'm asking you to look at. For example, changing the bandwidth. Okay. Now, you can also change uh, the type of distribution that you're selecting from. And so I'm going to show you a bit larger program. And we're not going to go through all the details in this program. This uses some advanced state of programming concepts. You can see that this tends to be, if I've got loops and um, a, a graphic and so forth. But what we're going to do is we're going to produce two graphs. The first graph is going to show you what happens when we change the kernel estimator we use. The default is this one right here. And there are seven others that one could choose. And then in the second graphic, I'm going to change the bandwidth, but use just a single uh, kernel estimator. Let's go ahead and run this program. So putting these programs side by side, on the left I'm using different kernel functions. So I've got epan2, cosine, gaussian, and so forth. Those are the different ones you can choose from. And you can see that using the default bandwidth, you can see the kinds of output they produce. So the default uh, in the upper left tends to produce a little bit more smooth distribution, although the gaussian doesn't look so bad either. On the other hand, on the other graphic, looking at changing the, changing the kernel half widths, going from 1 to 4.5 in 0.5 intervals for this occupational prestige variable, you can see that lower values produce um, more granular kinds of output visualizations showing more detail that they're averaged over, the averaging is over a smaller width, uh, smaller range of values, and that as we get to the larger values we get more smoothing. And of course you can put these two together. The option to change the kernel is uh, called kernel, and for bandwidth is B width. Another nice feature of kernel density, like histograms, is we can use the by option. So here I'm going to create two kernel density plots, one for male respondents and one for female respondents. And we can see that the distributions are subtly different, that the female distribution has a bit of a dip in the middle, and the male distribution has, has, doesn't uh, have that deep of a dip. But other than that, they're fairly similar. I'm going to create another graphic going by marital. Marital has five categories, so this will produce five separate graphs for me. And again, we can see that most of these are skewed a bit to the right. 
Uh, and some, but some of them, for example, the never marries are a bit taller, that is lower occupational prestige seems to be normal than something like separated um, or uh, married. So <clears throat> when you use a buy option, as we suggested, as I suggested in the histogram video, you don't want to use a continuous or quantitative variable here. You want to use some type of discrete or categorical variable, something with few categories. Sex had two categories, marital status has five. These produce acceptable graphs. Something like number of years of education, which might have 20 or 23 or 24 different um, individual discrete values, will produce a graphic that's too confusing, too small to read. Now, one of the reasons people like the two-way versions of graphics and Stata is that you can superimpose different kinds of graphic information or visual information on top of each other. So let's look at this example on uh, line 19. I'm going to produce a kernel density plot, and I'm going to superimpose a histogram of the same data. Notice that my two, so I use two-way, so Stata knows that I'm doing some kind of graphic. Then within parentheses, I'm saying th these are the different kinds of graphics. The first one is just k-density with prestige 80, and that's it. I'm not changing the bandwidth. I'm not changing any of the options. The second graph is going to be a histogram with prestige 80. So everything in those two parentheses are discrete different graphs. And then finally, I'm going to name this graphic k1 and, of course, use the replace sub option. Now, the order of how you do your graphics matters. Stata produces graphics in layers, and your first graph will be produced first, and then the second graph will be laid over the top of it. And so sometimes that top graph will obscure pieces beneath it, and that's going to happen in this first example. We're going to see the kernel density plot first, and then we're going to see the uh, histogram on top of it. So here's our graphic, and you can see again that, this his, that the kernel density plot is hidden behind the histogram, and that's because the order of the graphics matters because they're put down in layers. So I'm going to issue this command again, but I'm going to reverse my two graphs. Let's do the histogram first and then the kernel density plot. My expectation is that the histogram will be laid down behind the kernel density plot and we'll have a better view of these two pieces of information together. Also notice that um, on this first graphic, there's a blue, that the kernel density plot is blue. And that's going to change when I execute this command on line 20. So here's our two identical plots, except for the order of the layers. And I like the kernel density plot in front, and I can see through to the histogram behind it. But notice that the color of the line has changed. Stata has different styles. Every element in your Stata graph is uh, governed by some kind of style. And styles are done in order of graphics. So style 1 is applied to the first graph and style 2 to the second. And so what's happening here is that, that I can tell by looking at this that the first graphic um, is blue and the second graph, uh, the first style is blue and the second style is red. I don't let this uh, bother me too much. I don't worry about it because if I want a different color line, I can dig through the manual and find the option to change the color of the line, the width of the line, pattern of the line, and all that stuff for the uh, normal, I'm sorry, for the kernel density plot. And then finally, I'm going to go back and show you um, one last command here for kernel density, where I'm going to create my histogram, where I'm going to have the bin width be equal to 10. Remember that Prestige 80 has a, has 69, has a range of 69, so if I use a width of 10, I'll get approximately 7 bars. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate my Prestige 80, uh, my k-density uh, graphic with Prestige 80, and I'm going to specify a bandwidth of 4.5. And you'll see that these still will superimpose very nicely, even though I've collapsed or binned the data. Normally, I wouldn't produce both of these together. I use kernel density all the time to get a quick look at my data. I use it more than histogram. I find that it gives me a pretty good view of the data without worrying about bin width or number of bins. And so I'm pretty happy for data exploration to just use kernel density. And I think you might enjoy it, too. Keep playing with it, and if you have any questions, please give me a call or send me an email, and I'll do my best to answer it.
And it's code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happened.